In 1923, a group of the world's most successful, wealthy people met at a Chicago hotel. Present were, present were the president of the largest independent steel company, the president of the largest utility company, the greatest wheat investor, the president of the New York Stock Exchange, and a member of the president's cabinet, and the president of the Bank of International Settlements. The head of the world's greatest companies, these collective wealthy men controlled more wealth than there was in the United States Treasury. And for years, newspapers and magazines had been printing their success stories and urging the youth of the nation to follow their examples. 25 years later, let's see what happened to them. The president of the largest independent steel company, his name was Charles Schwab. He lived on borrowed money the last five years of his life, and he died penniless. The greatest wheat investor, Arthur Cutton, died abroad in poverty. The president of the New York Stock Exchange, Richard Whitney, was recently released from Sing Sing. For those of you who don't know, that is a prison. The member of the president's cabinet, Albert Fall, was pardoned from prison so he could die at home. And the president of the Bank of International Settlement, Leon Fraser, he committed suicide. And the head of the world's greatest monopoly, Ivor Kruger, he committed suicide. All of these men had learned to make money, but no one taught them how to live. The Bible says a lot about riches. Jesus Christ became poor to make us rich. Notice, first of all, in Matthew chapter 19. Notice chapter 19. You want to ask yourself a very, very important question because there's a lot of preaching out there that talks about getting rich in God's name. Uh, you want to be careful how you read the Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 19. Look at verse 16. Please notice from these verses here that we're going to read that Jesus Christ was never, never impressed by riches. Verse 16, someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And he said to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said, All these things I've kept, what am I still lacking. Jesus said, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven and follow me. But when the young man heard the statement, he went away grieving, sad, sorrowful. He was one who owned much property. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 13. Twelve, verse 13, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. He said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? Then he said to them, Beware and be on guard against every form of greed, for not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. Productive, And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to him, You fool. This very night, your soul is required of you, and, and now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. How does Jesus Christ want to give his riches? He became poor to make us rich. You better be careful of American Christianity where you think you can be a clown beginning in school. And Miami... Whenever a student wanted to be a clown, 
I'd call the parents in. I would say to the students, now be a clown. Jesus Christ wants to give his riches. Pity the soul that's rich, 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 a mansion, boats, and swimming pools, millions and millions of dollars, and he dies. You fool. Matthew chapter 1. What are his true riches? And today I can only give you one. There's a list. Look at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. There's a list of God's riches. I can only give you one today, and even this one I can only bar barely touch on. Look at Matthew chapter 9. Look at verse 1. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over the sea and came to his own city, and they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed, a paralytic, a man who cannot walk. He's paralyzed, lying on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. True riches begins when you know for sure God has forgiven your sins. Only God can forgive your sins. Your mother, your parents, your siblings, your child, people can forgive you of what you've done to them. You want God's forgiveness. The religious leaders here they're upset. But they do ask a good question. Hey, only God can forgive sins. You're blaspheming. You're right. Only God can forgive sins. But let me ask you something. What do you, what do, you do if you see someone rise, a, par a paralyzed man to walk, and he makes a deaf man to hear, and a blind man to see, and he goes to a funeral, and he raises people from the dead, and then when you kill him, he rises from the dead. What do you call this man? No, no, Napoleon Bonaparte says, I know men, and I tell you that Jesus Christ is no mere man. Between him and every other person in the world, there's no possible term of comparison. Alexander, Caesar, Charlemagne, and I have founded empires, but on what did we rest the creations of our genius? Upon force, military. Jesus Christ founded his empire upon love, and at this very hour, at this very hour, Napoleon lived hundreds of years ago. Still today, at this very hour, millions of men will die for him. Especially in the Middle East. They're dying every day. But they're at peace. They have God's forgiveness. They're rich. What is God's forgiveness? His forgiveness... The forgiveness of Jesus Christ, God's forgiveness, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ is he restores us to himself without any guilt. You'd have to be a fool, stupid, to ignore this. Millions, billions do it every day. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Look at verse 27. Hebrews 9, verse 27, it says this, and inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once. You can clown, you can clown, you can clown. You can live the life of a fool. Almost all of you today, almost all of you yesterday heard Ashley Severe. Foolishness will catch up with you. It is appointed unto man to die once, and after this comes the judgment. Jesus Christ doesn't want us to meet him with guilt. He wants to forgive. 
Whoever is forgiven is rich. Psalm 32 says, How blessed, how happy to be envied is he whose transgression, his sins, his rebellion, his guilt is forgiven. How happy is that person? This is just the tip of the iceberg that he became poor to make us rich. Leave it to American Christianity that we want to produce clowns. Your parents don't, the school doesn't, the teachers don't. Isaiah chapter 43. Verse 25, Isaiah 43 says this. Chapter 43, verse 25. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. That's what God's forgiveness is like. And I'm going to keep saying it. And yet people want to be clowns and ignore this. Isaiah 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. He will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly forgive. The woman married five times, living with the sixth man. The woman caught in adultery. Ashley Severe, Mitch, me, you, he wants to abundantly pardon. And let, let me get this straight. The best we can do is be clowns? That's the best we can do? Micah chapter 7 Verse 18, who is a God like you? Yeah, you want to ask the followers of Islam. Allah, he seems like he's bloodthirsty. They carry swords. They'll behead you even on YouTube or social media. What kind of God do you have? Who is a God like you? You who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious act of the remnant of his possession. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread on our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. He buries our sins into the depths of the sea. I've heard it said that the deepest part of it, an ocean is in the Pacific, I forget, the Mariana Trenches, I believe it's called. I believe it's seven, eight miles down below. Uh, Satan comes to fish. To accuse. To condemn. And he does this day and night. The Christian is rich. Satan can say all he wants. We have an advocate, an attorney, a defense attorney, who says he's covered. Psalm 86 Look at Psalm 86. Verse 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. I've told the classes, 7th through 12th graders, I've told the classes, anybody who wants to know about Jesus Christ, one week ago I was speaking to an atheist. 
If you want to know what God is like, study Jesus Christ. Meet an honest soul. Go to Luke chapter 7. Verse 36. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. Now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him. I don't know. I don't know. If this was going to be a, a good time to go dine with him. He entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there was a woman of the city who was a sinner, most likely a prostitute. Most likely a woman who has given herself to so many men. And when she learned that Jesus Christ was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him and that she is a sinner. And Jesus answered him, <clears throat> Simon, I know your thoughts. I have something to say to you. Go ahead, say it, say it, teacher. A many lender had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. Which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who he forgave more. He said to him, you have judged correctly. Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You have been rude. You gave me no water for my feet, but she's wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but see, she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she's anointed my feet with perfume. Simon, Simon, she went way beyond common decency and courtesy. For this reason, I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. Oh, maybe that's why we're clowns. Blessed, happy, to be envied is the person who doesn't have to go into sin. Ashley and Mitch will tell you it's not worth what they have to live with. And the memories of this Oh, they know they're forgiven. They know they're blessed. Oh, they would tell any young person, no, 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 you don't know the pain of my memories. Maybe that's why we become clowns. We think we're forgiven little. Maybe we're not studying the Bible to see that our pride is just as monstrous, probably even worse than a woman going to spend her life and body on men. Satan didn't give himself to angels in perversion. Satan gave himself to pride. That's how he became a devil, pride. And he said to her, can, can, I did not grow up in church. I knew nothing of the Bible until I was in North Dakota up there to wrestle. 19 years old, someone gives me the Bible. It changes my life for 40 years. I'm studying this. This is what changed my life. Really? Really? Jesus Christ is like this? Those who were reclining at the table began to say to themselves, who is this man? Wouldn't you like to be there and say, hello, why are you so deaf? Why are you such clowns? Why are you so blind? Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. She walked out rich.
Hebrews 9, 22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. God forgives sins. And so since therefore Jesus is God and he paid the price, we're coming up to Easter. He suffered and died. He became poor to make us rich. He's the one who says, go in peace. You're forgiven. You're rich. Mark Lederbach said, you are more sinful than you even dare to believe, but you are more loved than you, care, than you dared to hope. An Olympic gold medalist, high-diving champion, was once plagued with insomnia. He can't go to sleep. As he tossed and turned upon his bed, he began thinking deeply. About the success he had attained in his field. He meditated on the gold medals he had won. To his dismay, he realized that his success had not achieved what he had hoped. The excitement of winning, the photographers, the medals, the fame, all of this had given him some sense of pleasure. But the fact of death awaiting him left him with a complete sense of emptiness. He rose from the bed and made his way to the diving pool. Because of a full moon, he didn't even bother to turn the lights on. He, as he had climbed the high diving board, he watched his shadow cast by the moonlight on the far wall. The routine became so commonplace to him that he could confidently walk that board in the semi-darkness. At the end of the diving board, he prepared for the dive. He placed his feet together, then pulled his arms up to a horizontal position. As he did so, his eyes caught a glimpse of his shadow on the far wall. All he could see was a perfect cross. His mind immediately raced back to his Sunday school days. He remembered God demonstrates his love by being soft, by being mushy, by spoiling us? Oh no, God <clears throat> demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. All of a sudden he felt unclean as he considered the commandments he had broken. The sinless son of God had come to pay the penalty for his sins. And with tears in his eyes, the great athlete turned around, slowly made his way down to the bottom of the diving board. He fell to his knees, and he, he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. He was able to go back to bed and sleep peacefully. In the morning, he arose with a new sense of forgiveness for his sins. He made his way back to the pool and to his utter shock. The pool was empty of water. The previous evening, the caretaker of the pool had emptied it and was just beginning the process of refilling the pool. He realized how close he was to ending his life and stepping into eternity. No one knows how close death is. Thank God Jesus Christ doesn't want us to worry or be afraid of death. He does want us to humble ourselves and repent at least of being a stupid clown. 
but you're going to learn far more in the Bible of what you need to repent of. He wants us to come for forgiveness. How can a person have his forgiveness? Let me close with this. Turn to 1 John. For any person here who wants God's forgiveness, you don't want to step into eternity with his eyes of fire, with a lake of fire as his justice. If you don't want this, this is what you want to do. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. 1 John 1, verse 5, this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. There's no foolishness in God. Foolishness, what is foolishness? Having fun at the wrong time. At a funeral, inside a church, inside a classroom. Being stupid with your parents. That's darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we are liars. And we don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light and see himself as in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are lying to ourselves. The word here is deceiving. We are lying to ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we are telling God he is a liar. If you want his forgiveness, you're going to have to be honest. The prostitute, the woman of the street, she was honest with Jesus Christ. It's not even recorded what she said. It was communicated. I have a messed up life. Your sins are forgiven. Groucho Marx said, there's one way to find out if a man is honest. A ask him. Ask him. If he says yes, you know he's a crook. Acts chapter 2, second step. If you want his forgiveness, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And tell him how you're a sinner. You lie. You cheat. You're proud. You don't like to be corrected. You don't have to go to the streets. You don't have to go out and commit murder. You don't have to be like Mitch, drive a stolen car and kill two of your friends. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced. Yeah, the old-fashioned conviction, the cutting of the heart. I am wrong. I am guilty. Paul says in the last days, men are going to want their ears tickled. They want to hear God's mush and his gush and how he's going to spoil us. We call those false teachers. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you want his forgiveness, you got to repent. you got to change. If you're waking up each day being the same clown and fool, you can be sure you don't know, you don't understand, you don't have the gift of God's forgiveness. You are living a poor life worse than the poverty of Africa. There are some really poor communities in Africa and in the Middle East and Asia and South America. you got to be honest. You've got to repent. Last, look at Matthew chapter 6. Last verse. Look at verse 14. 
If you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. That's a whole nother lesson. Bitterness. The poison of bitterness. Drinking a glass of poison because you're bitter and hoping that they're going to die. If you want God's forgiveness, you got to forgive too. I got to forgive too. Jesus Christ came into this world. He made himself poor so that we could be rich. Oh, if you want to make money, John Wesley said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you. Go out there and work and make money. But that's not true wealth. That's not true riches. It's no wonder the writer of Hebrews says, how shall we escape? if we neglect so great a salvation, if we neglect and ignore God's great forgiveness, ain't nobody going to escape. I'm at the point where people text me each day. I'm just saying, come, Lord Jesus. The world has gone stark crazy, and they think, really, we're doing fine. The near insanity, the near insanity you can find in this closing. Two women from Southern California were about to cross the Mexican border to return to the United States when they saw what they looked like, a very small, sick animal in the ditch beside their car. As they examined it in the darkness of the night, they saw that it was a tiny chihuahua. They decided to take it home with them and nurse it back to health. However, because they were afraid that they were breaking the law, they put it in the trunk of their car. And then they drove it across the border back into the United States. Once they were back in the United States, they retrieved the animal and nursed it until they arrived home. One of the women was so concerned for this ailing dog that she actually took it to bed with her and reached out several times during the, night to, during the night to touch the tiny animal and reassure it that it was still present. The dog was so sick, the next morning she decided to take it to the veterinary, and that's when she found out that the animal was not a tiny, sick dog. It was a Mexican water rat. Dying of rabies. This is a picture of the ignorance of this world. They think that sin is a puppy. It's cute. Nice to play with. Until the consequences come. Why do people ignore God's forgiveness? They think sin is so nice. Foolishness and stupidity, it's such a good time. There's something worse than having a Mexican water rat with rabies as a pet. It is ignoring the forgiveness of God and showing the evidence of it. A stupid, foolish life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to be honest, to repent. Help us to be forgiving like you. Bless these students, the faculty. Bless each person. Father, help Hollywood Christian School to have genuine life here. We ask for your mercy, and Lord Jesus, thank you that you died, that you became poor to make us rich. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.